Good afternoon, everyone. Massive hailstones in Minnesota. Roads turning into rivers of hail in Italy. Exact same location where their cherry crop was decimated in May. 100 plus kilometer per hour winds rip through Warsaw. Another winter storm coming through Australia dumping snow following the same track as the 100 year storm just two weeks ago. Snow reporting already depths of up to six inches. La Nina having an effect on Australian weather going to be wetter and cooler as well as China heaviest rain in 43 years. 500 year rainstorm in Denmark. Thailand floods. Japan floods. Myanmar floods. You have to wonder when these insurers are going to stop paying out on all the claims here. More rain expected in the area where China just lost 10 million tons of wheat due to rain. This should put China's ending wheat stocks down under 50 million tons for the year. What you're looking at could be the world's largest hail through the Guinness Book of World Records in Minnesota. Before a rare E3 tornado tore through, this size of hail dumped out of the sky. Many, many people collected samples. Lots of news stories about this unbelievable size. Staying with the theme of hail, Apulia, Italy. Raging hailstorm turns the streets into rivers of ice. This is where it is, coastal area north around Bari. News around the region also saying that summer's not arriving this year. This is the exact same region where... Massive hailstorms back in May destroyed the entire cherry crop throughout the region. Staying in Europe, Denmark, 500 year storms in nine locations. They call it a cloudburst. Let's substitute the word atmospheric compression event. They had nine of those around the country with different varying rainfalls. 115 millimeters is about four and a half inches in an hour. Kind of what was left over after a couple days of draining. You can still see the water depth throughout the cities and streets. Stairwells turning into small waterfalls. Warsaw, massive, I would say inland hurricane blows through unexpectedly. Whiteout conditions, so fast, so furious that a worker window cleaner got stuck up on the building because they couldn't see cover in time. How fast does that storm need to approach to trap somebody like that? Also, they closed the observatory because look at the wind howling up there. That's definitely hurricane force winds. Heaviest rain in 43 years across China, Guizhou, 22% increase from 2015 in the amount of floods. Rivers barely able to handle the flow. Few locations to run down in the different water depths that are around the country. Everywhere is getting soggy. The max they had was 200 millimeters. That's almost eight inches of rain in a single day. The result was the same thing you've seen through Bavaria, France, Thailand streets are flooding. 180 millimeters of rain, 24 hours in Japan. This is what their radar looks like. Myanmar flooding. China massive, so massive the floods. Here comes more for the tropical monsoon. Now the cost of these floods looking at around 2.4 billion so far, but this is just the beginning. So when do the insurers stop paying claims on any of these acts of nature damage? La Nina affecting conditions highlighted in blue, especially wetter in through continental Asia and China. Australia also going to receive more rainfall. Waters are cooling quickly. And the Weather Trends 360 forecast for the U.S. This winter is going to be epic cold and snow due to the La Nina. So it's having an effect globally. Taking a look back down in Australia, this is June 23rd. Going back two weeks when they had the 100-year storm, the exact same track, the exact same ferocity. Taking a look at the wind map from yesterday and the wind map from the beginning of the month's 100-year storm. This one's going to be a bit more intense for Tasmania as well as a bit of New Zealand as that thing smashes headlong into the South Island. Snow already being reported across New South Wales and some other locations. Love how the news puts like this little tiny dusting in their headline, but really it's looking more like this is coming off of the social media. Gee, do you think they're downplaying the effects of the snow? Small area in blue where some of the snow is accumulating already. Depths that they're looking at. Snows in Tasmania as well. Definitely going to increase as that storm front swings through. China's winter wheat production. Loss of 10 million tons minimum. These are the three provinces, Anhui, Jiangsu, Hebei, that all have lost production. 
Winter wheat 130 million tons in 2015, but down to 107 million tons this year. Anhui, Jiangsu, and Hebei provinces are where I start on the map there for you. This will bring China's ending wheat stocks down below 50 million tons for the year. How many more years before they're down to zero and go into negative? Corn and wheat belt areas within China as an overlay. More rain expected for the exact same area. And grand solar minimum conditions, definitely a little ice age cooler up around Xinjiang. South China Sea, little ice age surface temperatures cooler. No sunspots at the beginning of the month. And then again today, we're back to zero sunspots. It's a little bit early in the solar cycle downtrend for it to be zero spot. These are the areas across the globe where we grow wheat. It won't take much of that going offline before it affects our food prices drastically. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. It has now started. Our first losses from the grand solar minimum of our global grain crop is right here in front of you. And in this month alone, the wheat crop in China and the soya bean crop in Argentina.